A lot of times when you're coyote trapping, you're going to be working out of your vehicle and you can kind of keep most of your supplies in the vehicle and bring what you need just as far as you need to go to make a set. A five gallon bucket with an organizer is a, a good choice for that. In this case, we're going to bring along material for bedding my trap. Of course, we're going to have our trap. For a lot of the year, we're going to need some antifreeze. Um, in this particular case, we're using the RV antifreeze that people put in their water lines to keep the, the uh, mechanisms working during the winter time. It's uh, both safe ecologically and it works well. And it's cheap. <laughs> We're gonna have uh, two pairs of gloves. One pair I'm gonna use when I am handling my traps. Another pair I'm gonna use when I'm handling my lure. One of the biggest things about coyote trapping is that you don't want to contaminate your traps with scents that are going to make the animal dig. So if you see an animal that's digging, chances are you got lure or urine on your traps. And one of the ways to avoid that is to have one set for setting and one set for luring. Speaking of lure, we're going to have some lure with us to put um, on the set. A dirt sifter. Um, this is called the Texas teacup. Basically, there's, there are different kinds. Another kind is a square kind, but they all work on the same principle. You're, as you make your set you're gonna, and dig your bed, you're going to put the dirt in here. And then after you get your trap bedded with your bedding material, you're going to be sifting that natural dirt over the top of it so it blends in. We have another tool here. Uh, dual use. One has a uh, three pound hammer on the end. That can be used for driving stakes. I can dig out my trap bed with this side. And if I want to dig a dirt hole, I have a little bit of a trowel on this end of the, the uh, tool. Of course, I'm going to need a stake uh, for staking. There are different kinds of stakes. This is a safety tool that I can slip um, underneath the jaws of the trap when I'm setting it so that I can really push down without setting the trap off. And uh, this is really a, a handy thing to have along because you want that trap to be bedded solid. That's the other reason that will make a coyote shy away or dig up your traps is if your trap just rocks back and forth a little bit and he feels that movement, he might get curious and start digging around. I'm going to carry some spare parts with me. Usually carry some spare trap tags, some spare J hooks. When things uh, starting to get worn out or they get damaged uh, in the field, I want to be able to fix that trap and use it again. In order to fix the traps, I usually carry a J hook tool. Pretty simple. pair of needle, needle nose pliers, and for some of the bigger work, carry a vice grips. Um, this can be good for not only working on traps, but if you have a stake that's being particularly hard to remove, you can attach this to your stake and twist it back and forth just to loosen it up a little bit, and that'll make it a lot easier to extract. Gonna need some pan covers. Um, for my trap. Okay, people have mixed feelings about this, but a lot of times I'll mark my traps. Um, sometimes I'll just use regular flagging, the same stuff coyotes see when they're moving across the country and the people have been putting in uh, power lines or whatnot. Uh, actually, a little bit of movement sometimes helps to get them near the set. It, it sounds kind of silly, but things can change when you're on the trap line. For example, if you're running traps for coyotes and you get some snow, what was easy to find can be hard to find. So this will at least get me close to the trap set in order to locate it when I want to pull my traps.